And welcome to Baycats Banter, the official podcast of the Barry Baycats. This is episode three of season three. Sam McCoy with you, and I am joined by new Baycat left-handed pitcher, Chris Lazar. Chris, thanks for hopping on. How's it going? Not too bad. Not too bad. Just, uh, you know, getting that itch. The weather the weather is getting nice. It's only February when we're recording this. Uh, and so it's uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. We're almost there. So I know you briefly talked about how your signing came to be, uh, but you mentioned on your podcast that Josh Mantlow reached out to you and asked if you had any uh, pitcher recommendations. So can you kind of explain how that conversation went and why you chose the Bay Cats? Yeah, so actually I was at uh, game six of the finals um, and me and Josh were just talking and um, I was telling them how like uh, I really like everything that they're doing over there in Barrie and um, I think it's a super sustainable, uh, super sustainable product, kind of like I talked about on my on my podcast for the last uh, the last few months there. Um, and so we just got to chatting and uh, I told them I was like, yeah, like when uh, whenever uh, you can start signing players, like give me a call and we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I was still weighing a couple options. It's not like I was always coming to Barry, but um I was kind of weighing my options. Josh was the first one to reach out to me. He said, uh, yeah, he sent me a text, said, hey, do you know any uh, do you know any decent left-handed pitchers? I'm looking for one this season. And uh I said, Yeah, I might, I might know a guy. Uh so we just we just got to talk and we talked about kind of what that might look like. And uh yeah, now we're here. I guess we'll start with your baseball journey. You played division two college ball at the University of Sioux Falls in South Dakota. So how did that experience come how did that opportunity, I guess, come to be and what was that experience like? Yeah, it was cool. Um, so yeah, my senior year of high school, uh, going into my senior year of high school, um, I was playing for the Ontario Terriers and my coach, Rick Johnston knew the pitching coach at Sioux Falls, um, at the time. And so he hit me up. He was like, Hey, we'd love to have you come down for a visit. So I went down for a visit threw a bullpen for them. Uh, they offered me, um, they made me an offer like not even a week later after that visit. Uh, and then, it all it all happened really really fast. Uh, it was it was one of the first opportunities I got, but I I really liked it there. Um, uh, going into it, I thought it would be a good opportunity, and it did end up being a good opportunity. It took a it took a few years, um, but I finally uh, by by the end of my time there, it was uh, um, I I was able to be the pitcher that I thought I could be, um, and so that uh, it was it was a good experience, uh, and it's it's an experience and an opportunity. I don't think I would be. I know it sounds cliche, but I don't think I would be like the the pitcher that I ended up being um, if it wasn't for my my time at Sioux Falls. So, yeah, it was cool. It was different. It's 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 a place that nobody really knows about, right? Every everybody I tell that I went to Sioux Falls, they go, "What what the hell is Sioux Falls? What's what is what is Sioux Falls?" And so um, that was that was my reaction too when I first got the uh, the opportunity. But uh, you know, it kind of became my second home for a while there, and I still have a lot of. Uh, a lot of good friends that I went to school there. So it was, it was cool. Cool. Yeah. I always like hearing a uh, college baseball story. So that was nice. Uh, so you came to the IBL in 2016 with the Cardinals. What did you know about the league at the time before making the decision? So it's funny when I, uh, when I was at high, so again, my, my last year of, uh, of high school, I, I was playing for the Terriers and Dean Desenzo was one of our coaches and he was the general manager for the Hamilton Cardinals at the time. And so me and him were talking even, even that year, um and scott vandevalk who was uh associated with the guelph royals at the time we were all kind of talking um and uh i made it known that i wanted to play in the ibl and the entire year dean was telling me man like i don't think you're good enough to play in the ibl and like i think he i think he meant it honestly uh i think at the time he wasn't sure um and then i had one one game in uh in nashville against the east cob they were one of the top um u.s travel ball teams um in the nation at the time. And, uh, I threw a complete game. We ended up winning the game and, uh, coming off the field after the game, I went right up to Dean and I said, Hey, do you think I'm good enough to play in the IBL now? And so we, we kind of had a, we kind of had a good laugh about it. And then, so it was kind of set in stone before I even went to school that I was going to play for the Cardinals. Um, so that's kind of how that opportunity came about. And then, uh, yeah, the first, uh, the first year there was, uh, was pretty humbling, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how that opportunity came about. Well, you played uh, for Cardinals for a number of years. You played for the Jackfish a little bit in 2022. Uh, but 2023, you were recovering from surgery. So, like, I want to know how has the recovery been? And are you at the stage now where you can start throwing again? 
Yeah, it's been long. Uh, it's been long and and frankly annoying. Um, but yeah, I got surgery in uh, in May of or at the end of April um, last year, uh, April twenty fifth, to repair a torn labrum. Uh, the labrum was torn. I'm pretty sure it happened a couple years ago. To be honest, I think that uh, it first started to go back in 2021 and then I pitched through it. And then in 2022, I just never was really able to be myself. Um, and so I was like, yeah, it's, uh, it, it might be time to, to go under the knife. I talked to, to my surgeon, Dr. Jason Smith, who's amazing. And he said, uh, yeah, you have two options here. You can either stop playing baseball and you probably don't need the surgery because you can do all your regular life things. Um, but if you want to pick up a ball and throw it at a hundred percent again, uh, you're going to need to go under the knife. And so I decided that's what I was going to do. Um, and so, yeah, obviously, you know, I'm sure we'll get into the podcast and everything like that, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm at the point now where I'm probably less than a week away from getting off a mound for the first time since, uh, since 2022. So yeah, I've been throwing, it's been feeling really, really good. Um, and so I'm, uh, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm ready to get back at it. Did you have any, um, friends that you knew that have went into surgery like that? Like, did you get any advice or like know what it was going to be like? Yeah. I mean, it's different for everybody, but uh, yeah, like one of my really good friends in uh, uh, from Sioux Falls, he got, uh, he had a torn labrum and he got surgery. He came back throwing harder than he did um, before he got the surgery. And uh, he was a better pitcher when he came back and he just said, he's like, yep, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get annoyed. Um but you're going to be fine. Like it's, it's, it's going to be okay. So yeah, I, I did kind of lean on him for, for a while there. Cause there were times where I'm, you know, it, it felt better some days than others. And the days when it wasn't feeling well, I was like, Hey, like, is it normal for, for me to feel this way right now? And he's like, yep, trust me, I've been through it. And so it was just kind of more like reassurance. It made it uh, a lot easier on me mentally to, to not worry that like, if my arm hurts, that might be the end of it, you know? Um, so I'm uh yeah I'm, I'm grateful that uh that I did have somebody to lean on at that time. That's always that's always nice. Um, so before we get into this season, I want to know what the media experience was like. Obviously, you had the podcast and the power rankings, um, and you also did the documentary with John Salazzo for I would I think it was a school project, wasn't it? Not. Yeah. Yeah, and um. You also had some reps in the broadcast booth, uh, and you were also in Barry to call Game Three of the first round against the Hamilton Cardinals. Uh, what was it like seeing the game from a bit of a different point of view? Yeah, it was it was interesting, right? Like I felt like I was. Uh, I also did uh, did go into the broadcast booth in London and also Hamilton throughout the season. So and Kitchener, so it was kind of bouncing around everywhere. Um, and uh, no, it was it was a super unique. Uh, opportunity it was it was an interesting opportunity where like I'm still very closely connected to the league I still know most of the people in the league um and so it allowed me to get some more access than I think most people in my position normally would um and uh yeah again I think I have a really strong knowledge for the game I think I have a really really high baseball IQ and so um that was kind of what what why I wanted to do it was to um impart some of that on the people watching uh, at home in terms, especially in terms of color commentary and being able to, to break down the game um, from that standpoint. So it, it was, uh, it was definitely, it was definitely different. It was interesting. Um, the first game I did actually in the booth was with Dylan Baker in London um, and Dylan's awesome. And uh, he made, he made my life super easy, um, but it was, it, it, it speeds up on you really, really quickly. And so uh, it's, it, it's difficult to, uh, find that line of being a fan versus being a, a broadcaster. Um, and so for me, that might've been a little bit easier only because again, I, uh, I know kind of everybody equally and I didn't have a horse in the race. Um, but it was, uh, it was certainly an interesting experience and one that I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got to do, to be quite honest. Cool. Well, uh, so 2024, uh, from what you have seen uh, from this team, I guess the last few years and all the signings you might've, been caught up on what is your uh 2024 barry vacats preview uh yeah are you are you gonna make me go back into my inside inner county voice here you're gonna make me go yeah, back, let's, back let's, into that let's see hear, let's hear let's, the preview i think i think a player preview would work better <laughs> yeah i mean um obviously most of the core is coming back uh if not all of the core uh, as far as i know um 
we've made some really good signings. Obviously, getting Frank back is huge. Um, adding a guy like a Carlos Sano. Carlos Sano, from all the people I've talked to, is an absolute stud. Um, and he's gonna be he's gonna be really really good. Um, for us this year, I know Josh is super super excited about um about the team. And there's there's a healthy hunger um with this group because of the fact of how last year ended and the the animosity between um the two teams at the end there with uh with Welland and uh that chip on the shoulder of getting so close um but having having that taste right and, and knowing that you're so close um and so I think that hunger is really going to help this team um and then having the the ring ceremony the Welland ring ceremony be uh against us as well like that just adds more fuel to the fire right so um I think the team's in a really good spot uh it's a it's a veteran team now, which it wasn't for the last, uh, for the last few years, it started to be again last year, which is why uh, they were successful. Um, but yeah, now it's, it's, everyone's kind of in their, in their, in their prime, right? Everyone's in their mid to late twenties. Um, we got a pitching staff that has a chance to be really, really good. Um, hopefully I can become somewhat of the version that I used to be when I was healthy uh, and help out this group as well. And uh, yeah, no, we're, we're super excited. We think we got a really good shot at this thing. So I want to ask who is the teammate you're most looking forward to playing with, but before I do what, cause when you started in the league, Barry was in the middle of winning six straight championships. They had a squad up there. What from an outsider point of view, uh, kind of stood out to you about the Bay cats over the years and how impressed were you with their ability to bounce back from COVID and now being a contender again? Um, Yeah. So I'll start with, with the first part of your question there. Um, I think the most impressive part about that team was just their ability to turn it on when they wanted to. Um, They, they, they tend, they, they kind of coasted uh, for, for long stretches there. And and that's natural when you've won six straight championships um, or whatever the number was at, at, in each subsequent year. Um, but their ability just like when when they knew they needed to and their ability to turn it on was was really impressive. Um, just the fact that like they they did just enough to win, but also did it convincingly. Um, like you see a lot of the scores in some of those games. They weren't they didn't really blow a lot of teams out, but they just found ways to win games all the time. Um, and so when you're a veteran team and you've been together for a long time and you know what everybody's capable of, um, that makes that a lot easier. And then obviously the uh the the talent on the mound was was second to none right with Claudio Custodio back then Frank um was a part of that at the tail end uh St. Kitts was unbelievable St. Kitts is one of the best arms I've seen in this entire league um so that was that was what impressed me about that and then for the new for the new generation it, it bounced back quicker than I thought it was going to um which like if you asked me a year ago at this time, if I was going to be playing for the Barry Bay cats, I would have told you absolutely not. Because like one of my big things was that I wanted to go to a team that has a chance to win a championship immediately. Right. Um, that's part of the reason that I, that's a big reason I got the surgery. That's a big reason uh, I ended up in Welland. Um, and I just thought Barry was still too young and I didn't think they were, they were ready. And then halfway through last season, um, coincidentally right after I called them average which we don't need to talk about um but right after right after I did that they just went on a tear right and then they they kind of left everybody else in the dust and um again like last year Welland was such a if you just looked at it on paper right like Welland's roster versus Barry's roster from last year it really should not have been that close like Welland had so much talent on that team um and truthfully Barry was what one out away from going up 3-1 in that series so it was very, very close. And, and this team with everybody coming back, um, they're only going to be better and and we're only going to be better. Um, and then some other additions like, like a Sano, hopefully I can, I can bring something to the table there as well. Um, some of the other position players that we've added, uh, the culture is really good. Um, teams, the, the team has grown together over the last few years. You see a lot of the main pieces that are here. They were here two, three years ago. Um, and that's how you build a sustainable winner in this league. And so I think that Barry has all of the, the ingredients to be a sustainable winner in this league. Yeah, no, definitely. Any, any baseball goals for you this season? Obviously you want to win a championship, but like any, 
goals for yourself? Um, I mean, like getting getting off a mountain, pitching against hitters again. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's goal number one is being able to to get through that first outing healthy. Um, and and be able to stay healthy throughout the season. Uh, that's that's probably my biggest goal. But honestly, like I just I just want to win, man. Um, I want to win, and uh, I want to feel on a personal level. Um, I want to feel somewhat like I did back in 2019, um, uh, when, uh, when I was the top guy in Hamilton at the time. Right. And so that was, that was pretty cool. And I don't think, again, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be the top guy on a staff with Frank Garst and Carlos Sano by any means, but, um, that's, that's totally fine by me. I don't care as long as we win. Um, and so I just want to be able to contribute and, um, uh, and get off that hill and just, just get that itch again. Um, and hopefully end it off with, uh, with a ring, something that the one thing that I haven't been able to accomplish in this, uh, in this league. All right. So now, yeah, now I'll ask you that question. What teammate are you most looking forward to play with this season? Oh, that's a, that's such a tough one. Um, Rio will tell you he's excited to have me on the team because I know he didn't like facing me. Um, in terms of that's such a difficult question. Uh, Honestly, like Royce Ando, I'm I'm excited to play with Royce um this summer. He uh me and him played against each other um basically our entire like childhood growing up. Um so he's it'll it'll be it'll be cool to have him on, on this side. I always hated throwing to him. Um also I think Frank, uh I'm excited to play with Frank just because he's he's also a lefty um who mixes mixes it in and and, and works to all quadrants of the plate um good off speed all that stuff and so um just kind of getting to pick his brain a little bit and figure out what makes him successful and 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 learn a little bit more from him as well uh i think that'll be really cool and then yeah i mean ryan rio right the mayor of barry he uh he's yeah. uh he's gonna be a lot of fun to to play with as well honestly like i can't i can't give you a great answer just because like i'm i'm looking forward to playing with with all these guys um it should be it should be a lot of fun yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of great players and not not just players, people on this team. Uh, before we let you go, is there anything you would like to say to the fans or something you want them to know about you that we didn't discuss? Um, yeah, just uh, just that I'm a gamer. Uh, I'm going to go out there and, uh, you know, it might not look uh, it might not look sexy. It might not be 95. It might not be anything like that. I'm not going to strike out 13 guys in a game, um, but I'm going to get people out. And you're going to get a lot of emotion out of me. Um, and I'm, I'm going to let you know how I feel. And uh, yeah, I'm just really, really excited to get going. And uh, yeah, I hope that I can uh, I can go out there and, and, and do my thing and that you guys will uh, will be behind me 100%. All right. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it for episode number three. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Don't forget, opening day is May 16th against the Toronto Maple Leafs. You can get your tickets at BarryBaycats.com. Thanks to Chris Lazar for joining us, and we'll see you next time.